Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and it's soup season. It's soup season, and it's one of my favorite times of year, and it's extra special because the Instant Pot does soups unlike anything else. It makes the best soups, period. Better than Dutch ovens, better than a regular standard stovetop, anything. It's the best way to make a soup, not only because it's the quickest way to make fantastic soups, because it locks in the most flavor when it pressure cooks everything. Now, one of my most favorite soups in the world is a butternut squash, and I have a really good recipe for that. But I said, how about I take some elements of my spinach and sausage soup and kind of marry it with a butternut squash soup. And guys, we're gonna make today butternut sausage soup, and this is going to take anybody who will sneer their nose up at a butternut squash and then literally turn and go, what did I just eat? Give me another bowl. This stuff is absolutely awesome, comforting on every single level, and it's gonna be the star of your Thanksgiving table. Well, maybe alongside the stuffing. Actually, dip the stuffing in this. Dipping the stuffing in this would be amazing. Anyway, let's get to it. Let's go to the Instant Pot and make some butternut sausage soup. The first thing we'll do is we'll take these three shallots, and they look like the shallot sisters, right? Like they're about to like perform somewhere. All right, take three of these up, and there they are, all nice and sliced up and live on stage, ready to go. And I'll tell you, they pack a punch. I love shallots, and uh, I think they have the most powerful flavor of any onion, but in a great, great way. Add so much flavor. Don't be fooled by their size. They are loaded with amazingness. All right, let's move on. And now we're gonna get going on our dish by adding in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. All right, now I'm gonna come down to the control panel on the beautiful upgraded Duo Plus model, hit the saute button, and make sure I'm on the high setting. To do that on this model, I adjust with these arrow buttons for temperature. That's low, medium, high, I want it on high. Um, and if you don't have that kind of button on yours and you only have the saute button, you hit that to switch. Or if your model has an adjust button, you hit that to switch. So each model is a little different, but it's self-explanatory. And then I hit the start button if your model has that to get going. If you don't have a start button on your model, it'll automatically start after doing nothing for a few seconds. Now once the oil is heated, it is time to add our sausage. Now folks, I am using for this two pounds of Italian sausage, a mix of sweet, the lighter color, and hot. You know, hot Italian sausage usually isn't even that spicy. And by the way, I like Premio brand. This stuff is awesome. And it's in a lot of markets, pretty universal. The important thing is here to keep it in its full sausage link form. And that is because we are going to, in batches, sear each side of the sausage. And then after about you know, 45 seconds to a minute, just give it a little rotation here. We want each side to be a little bit seared. Okay, and once we're looking like this, you see this like some like seared edge there to it, a little bit brown, we're good. Just put it in a bowl and let it rest, or a plate, whatever. There we go. And then just repeat with your remaining amounts of sausage. Okay, and there's my sausage, nice and lightly seared on each side. I'm gonna let this rest on this plate or bowl, and then we're gonna focus our attention back in the pot. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons or a quarter of a stick of salted butter. And once the butter's all melted and bubbling, along with the oil and some of that sausage juice, we're gonna add in our shallots and three cloves or a tablespoon of crushed or minced garlic. And we're gonna saute everything in the pot for about three minutes. All right, and you can tell when a shallot has kind of had a nice saute going, when all the color has kind of gone out of it. It went from that nice, vibrant, purplish color to this more of a pale onion color. And as that color evaporates from the shallot, the aroma intensifies. Okay, next up, I'm gonna add in a half a cup of sherry wine. Put that in there. All right, you see the bottom of the pot right now? It's a little bit brown from all the sauteing of the shallots and the garlic, but watch this, when you add wine, it comes right up as soon as you scrape the bottom. That's called deglazing. In case you didn't know that, it is deglazing the bottom of a pot. It is all magically gone. If you're not gonna use the sherry wine, you're gonna add in a half a cup of broth right now. Whether that be garlic broth, vegetable broth, onion broth, chicken broth, turkey broth, whatever kind of broth you want, you add a half of a cup of it right now. To make sure the bottom is nice and deglazed, that means completely smooth. We wanna make sure that's always to the best of our ability before we ever pressure cook, because if it's caked on before we pressure cook, the pot will burn. And now that we've had a chance to deglaze the bottom of the pot, we're going to add in three and a half cups of that broth. 
Like I said, it can be chicken broth, garlic broth, onion broth, turkey broth, vegetable broth, the sky's the limit. And now we're gonna season this up with our seasonings here of one tablespoon of seasoned salt, yes, a whole tablespoon, and a teaspoon each of dried thyme, uh, ground sage or dried sage or rubbed sage, it really doesn't make a difference, just let it be a dried sage, and a teaspoon as well of black pepper, add that to the pot. And give it all a good stir to make sure all of our seasonings are nice and stirred into our broth. And now comes one of the two key ingredients, we already focused on some of that sausage, our butternut squash. Folks, I can't stress this enough, try to go to the market and get the stuff that's already pre-cut into cubes for you. It's going to be so much easier. We're going to use about four cups of the diced up butternut squash, which is about two pounds worth or 32 ounces. Costco also sells this, by the way, as well as the markets. It's usually pretty seasonal to this time of year, meaning the fall, but you can also find it year round in some places. Now I'm going to stir this up in the pot. It doesn't have to be stirred super well or anything. Just, you know, give it a little bit of a stir to make sure that the squash is nice and submerged in the broth. And now we're going to take our sausage and just nestle it in just on top, just like that. No stirring, just put it on top. You can even just like push it in just like that. Look at all that delicious, colorful oil. I love when sausage, especially hot sausage, releases its oils. It's what gives soup such beautiful additional color. I mean, this is already going to do the trick with the squash. Um, but if you made my spinach and sausage soup, you know what I'm talking about. All right, just like this is just fine with the sausage. And now we're ready to pressure cook. I'm going to take my lid. I'm going to secure it and make sure it's in the sealing position, which it already is on the Duo Plus model, the newer version. And now we'll come back to the control panel and hit the cancel button or the keep warm cancel button if your model shares those buttons. And then we're going to hit the pressure cook button, guys, for eight minutes. And then that's it. Pressure cook away. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're going to perform a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so we're going to take that lid off the pot. All right, and the first thing I want to do is I want to now take some tongs and remove that sausage to a bowl, a plate, whatever. Get it out of there. All right, perfect. And we're going to let this rest for a moment and then go right back to our pot, making sure that all of our squash is pretty much still in there. And now we're going to use one of my favorite appliances, a true godsend when it comes down to making soup the immersion blender or stick blender. Guys, this thing is not only a game changer, but it also is a mess saver and a time saver. Instead of having to puree your soup in batches in a blender and then transferring it back and forth, dirtying up and making things a disaster, all we have to do is take the blender and bring it to the pot itself directly. An immersion blender will do this. They're highly affordable. I will link where you can get these. I cannot recommend them enough. All right. So what we're gonna do, put it in there and begin to puree. All right, and there we have it, perfect. And it's so easy to clean this. All you gotta do is separate the bottom part from the top and then just clean it off. Could not be easier. Actually, I'm not gonna do that right now. I just wanted to show you how easy that was because we're gonna bring this back for a part two. But first, let's focus on our now our beautiful soup. Look at that beautiful color. All right, let's add some dairy. I'm gonna add in a half a cup of heavy cream or half and half. A packet or a little tub of a herb cheese or a spreadable herb cheese like Borson Alouette. You can make your own. I'll link to where you can get that. Let's put that in there. And a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. All right, now I'm going to stir that up in the pot just like so. Oh, it's going to get really creamy and really amazing here. Just want to give it a good stir until the cheese is mostly blended into our soup. There we go. And we have a few lumps remaining of that herb cheese. We're gonna bring our immersion blender back to the mix and have it do its thing. All right, perfect. Okay, perfection. Now we're gonna let this rest for a little bit and we're gonna focus on our sausage. All right, I'm gonna take my sausage links here and I'm gonna just basically cut quarter of an inch sized discs or about like four pieces per sausage. And then just toss them right back into that bowl and then continue cut. You know what? I can skip this, I have some powers here. And there we go. And actually I changed my mind. Instead of just cutting them into like quarter inch pieces or four pieces per link, I also then slice it down the center. So kind of like this. One, two, three, and then just kind of give it like each little edge here, like a little split down the middle. 
You see that? Perfect. I was a little close to my fingertip there. Just the tip though, and it all depends. Some people like the sausage cut, some don't like it cut. It all varies on the person, but obviously in this situation, I think we want to cut it up into smaller pieces. Okay, there we have it. All of our sausage nice and cut up, and if you want it in smaller pieces, cut it into smaller pieces. It's completely up to you. Some people like big sausage, some like little sausage. It depends on how you want to handle your sausage. That's perfect for me. All right, and back into the soup it goes. And there we have it guys, butternut sausage soup loaded with amazing sausage and amazing, amazing flavor. All right, let's ladle this up into some bowls. All right, definitely get a few pieces of sausage in there to begin with. And I like a shallow bowl for this. A nice shallow bowl is always nice to show off things in soup that are more substantial or a bit chunky. Love it. Excellent. Now I'm going to top it off with a few more sprinkles of some thyme in there. Give it a nice little touch. And then folks, there we have it. Butternut sausage soup. Let's dig in. Oh, and here it is my friends. Butternut sausage soup. I love the consistency. It's not overly thick. Sometimes I've had butternut squash soup and it's like a baby food puree. I don't want it that thick. I think it's perfect how it is. But of course, if you ever wanted it thicker, you could either add more butternut squash to it or you could even add some cornstarch slurry in a pinch. That'll make it happen. All right, here we go. Thanksgiving just got that much more thankful. Guys, this soup is just, it's slurptacious. It's super with an OU. Savor it. Savor the flavor. Even if you hate squash, like if the thought of it just turns you off completely, I can promise you that if you like a creamy, cheesy, sausagey type of dish or soup, you're going to become a lover of butternut squash after this. I, I'm telling you, I have real good feeling about that. But I need to get some approval from Richard. So Richard, come on in and give this a, a super slurp. Hey, banjo. Hi. There's. Oh, well, don't spill that now. It's in a shallow bowl. Um, he's gonna try the butternut sausage soup. Oh my gosh. It's very interesting. It's good. Yeah. That's that's really good. It's unusual. It's like a very very surprising but nice complimentary flavor. Good, hearty, autumnal. Yeah. Boy, why why am I big like that? Because you're standing behind me. Oh, okay. Good, so it's a good one. I think this one I honestly would say, even if people are completely like anti trying squash, this would completely convert them. It, does, it just is unbelievably sweet, yet at the same time savory, and it has that wonderful component with the meat, with the sausage, and honestly, like, sausage just always makes everything taste better. The juices as it cooks, it just courses throughout everything, and it just adds so much richness and deepness to it. That sweet with the pork is a, a very nice mix. So good. And also, like I said before, you can definitely cut your sausage into smaller pieces if you'd rather do that. Do it that way. I like the nice hearty pieces of sausage. It makes it more rustic. But if you want it smaller, do it. But I like it like this. You enjoying it? It worked good. Thank you. Absolutely fantastic, spectacular, and something to truly make the table really, really, really happy. Guys, if you enjoy Pressure Luck Cooking and all these recipes that go along with it, check out my website, which is PressureLuckCooking.com. I currently have two cookbooks out, the Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook, my original orange book, and the lighter Step-by-Step -Step Instant Pot Cookbook, the blue book. And in fact, the first one's also now available in Spanish in uh, certain parts of the world in Latin America, as well as Mexico and soon to be the United States. I've also written a third book, which is coming out in April of 2022, called The Simple Comfort Step-by-Step -Step Instant Pot Cookbook. We'll call that the yellow or the gold book. That one's gonna be full of comfort food, kind of like this recipe. Uh, check me out at facebook.com slash pressureluckcooking and give that page a like or follow it. I can't, the lines are blurred these days with the differences. Uh, I, every time I come out with a recipe, when you wanna hear about an appearance, maybe I'll be on a television show or something, you'll know there. Check out also uh, at Pressure Love Cooking on my YouTube, subscribe, uh, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, um, what else? TikTok perhaps, maybe, who knows? TikTok, TikTok, my time is ticking away from becoming a TikTok sensation. Uh, thank you so much again, guys, and remember the next time you want to make butternut squash soup, up the ante by making it butternut sausage soup. And I do have a good butternut squash soup too if you're not into the sausage, I promise you that. There we go. Mm.